If you have done online shopping, you might have noticed that a user or customer can have multiple addresses. Every time you do shopping, you place an order, you can choose one of these addresses. If you see this in database terms, this is called one-to-many relationships where one customer can have multiple addresses. To store in database, we have to implement one-to-many or many-to-one kind of relationships. In this video, I'll show you how this can be achieved. This is my service studio. I'm inside a reactive web application where I have an entity called customer. Just the usual stuff, name, contact details, and so on and so forth. I have bootstrapped this with some sample data. Uh, what I will do quickly is to create one more entity for customer addresses. And in this entity, maybe I can have things like postal code and maybe address line one and address line. In case you are following this, make sure you increase the length here. Address lines usually tend to be a bit longer. Now, next thing in, in our systems, you can keep on creating more and more entities like this, but then you can use the help of entity diagrams here where you can do some modeling, which is where we build relationships. What I'll do is drag and drop these two entities here, which are nothing but tables. And then we can see how uh, they look like basically the entity and these attributes, this entity and these attributes. So one as customer can have multiple addresses. So when you mouse over on any of these entities, you will see a connector branching out. It's starting from this and then spreading out to multiple, which means it's one to many kind of thing. So if you just go on and drag this and drop it on the other entity, it creates the one to many relationships. Now, if you just picture this, one customer can have multiple addresses now with this. If you want to create many to one, it's the other way where you can drag and drop and create the entity, something like this. Okay, I don't want to do cross referencing, but just to show you one to many, many to one is like this. Now, this was the easy part. You can do it faster, right? The next is uh, how to implement this on the screen. So to for a user to be able to add multiple addresses, let's go ahead and create our usual customer listing a detail screen. So I'm going to drag and drop my customer entity here. And I just want to show you how to retrieve and save data into this kind of one-to-many kind of relationship. Okay, so uh, nothing unusual here. Our customer page has the list of customers, well and good. And customer deal page has the ability to fill the customer form and save it. Okay, now what we're going to do is modify this page here to be able to add multiple addresses. Okay, and I also want to show maybe the added addresses somewhere here. Okay, so for this part, uh, let's start working. So first thing is I'm going to get rid of this placeholder and instead of this, I can maybe have a form. The form is here. Now, uh, Outsource platform is very smart. It knows relationship because you've already defined in the air diagram. So if I drag and drop this customer address here, it builds the form for me as usual. But now it also knows that there's customer information on this side. Now, what we need to do is while we are saving the address, we need to provide the name of the customer because in our uh, customer address entity, the customer ID is the foreign key from the customer table. Let's see how it is done. Okay, so in this part, let's modify this a bit. Now you can see here because of the relationship, the list of customers are already coming here as drop down. So platform is just trying to help us to have it. We don't want it because we can automatically do it. We have customer information on the page available. So what I will do is from the uh, widget tree, I'll delete this off. Okay, and then maybe we can read on this button. See if it does not make sense. Let's say add okay that looks much better uh, for now this is okay now while this is happening I also prepared the next part which is where we'll display the added addresses so for that I'll again drag and drop maybe somewhere below here uh, can you take the help of widget tree and can come here oops let me do it in two steps let's have a uh, table records maybe somewhere here and within the table records, we will have the list of customer addresses displayed. Okay, it looks a bit weird because there's no spacing between these. So what I will do is maybe the table I can put into a mm, container and the container then allows us to provide some styling elements like setting up margin. Okay, now it looks better. Uh, <clears throat> now this uh, part that we have built here with that drag and drop, it basically created this uh, query here on the page. If you look at customer detail page here, but from automatically did that. What I will do is I'll modify it. So if you open it, you will see 
in this query platform is already doing a join between customer address and customer table okay with or without and so on and so forth now i'll put a filter here because i don't want all the addresses i want only those addresses where customer dot customer addresses dot customer id is equals to the page variable customer id which is available here okay so with this now the application will only retrieve those uh, addresses relevant to this particular customer which we are on the page uh, next thing is let's work on the saving part so for adding uh, a new address into the address table we will first assign the customer id of the customer address table which is something like this now this is the query that is tied to the form so here if we expand the current one is tied to the form and the customer id will make it same as the customer id on the page okay and thereafter it's as usual we'll use the create or update address i mean in case you want to allow editing as well and then the source will be that query that we have just provided the value but this thing should be okay and we might as well display a message new address is added can be a message of kind success and uh, in the end don't forget to refresh the data for the table below so that the new address shows up, which is this one. I like this part where platform keeps on naming and renaming these kind of, uh, you know, artifacts automatically. So earlier, if you notice, this was get customer address. And the moment I put the filter, it became get customer addresses by customer ID. Very good. And uh, I think more or less that is uh, what we want. Uh, one more small modification I have to do is the save button. So by default platform, after creating a new customer, it will redirect back the user to the listing page i don't want that uh, because now with this i can make the customer i mean the user stay on the same page and he can have the id of the newly created customer from the message this this function above uh, ah, one more thing before i forget now these two things won't uh, make sense if customer is not created like imagine if it's a new customer form right new customer form where customer itself is not created yet you don't want to show the users these things right because you know it will not make sense because customized is not available so for that uh, uh just i'll go, go ahead and put this into a if and in the if condition i can say customer id not equal to null okay so if customer ID is not available this thing will not be shown we will do the same for this container result where we have this table so I'll right click and, and close an if and it will become true or false depending on the value of the customer ID. Looks okay. So I'll go ahead and publish this application to see how it looks. So most important part when you establish a one-to-many relationship before you save the record in that particular entity, you have to provide the value of the foreign key. In my case, it was a customer ID that I have to provide the value when I was you know, saving the new address. So it's ready now, let's launch it. Login. All the customers are here. These are coming from my bootstrap data. If I click on a new customer, something like this, you can see the address form is not appearing as of now because customer ID is probably nil. I can put a new address, maybe um, XYZ Industries. Contact name could be John. Uh, country can be Qatar. I'll leave these two empty. And when I save it, we stay on the same page and suddenly my form appears where I can add the postal code. So let's put the postal code as 999. I didn't put any validation, so it should be okay. This address, this building, add. And let me just scroll down bit so you can see the bottom part. And you can see the new address is added. Likewise, if I go on and add another address, maybe that address, that building, just so you can see the difference. Maybe this one also I can change to 8888 and add. You can see the second results added. Okay. Likewise, if I go back now and pick up any of the existing values also, it goes to my detail page. And I can see because custom ID is available, the form for adding uh, those addresses is already available, but it does not show addresses from other customer. It only shows the addresses for this particular customer and uh, that's how you implement one-to-many uh, -one or many-to-one relationship in our systems thanks for watching